Hey there guys, welcome to another edition of Mogul Live. James Pratt's my name. Thrilled to have you guys here to uh, to listen to our guest we've got here today, Ty Blackard, uh, co-founder, uh, COO, I'll have to confirm that with him, of uh, Nifty Labs. And for anyone that's thinking, what is Nifty Labs? Uh, that's what we're gonna talk about. Talk about NFTs, uh, obviously the partnership Mogul and, uh, and Nifty Labs have. Uh, as always guys, opportunity to ask any questions you like, whether it be about films, NFTs, blockchain, or just the industry itself. Uh, but we're really excited to do that. Just quickly as well, just before we do get into the chat with Ty, I can see uh, he's in the chat already. Uh, just a quick update as well, Mogul, really exciting news. We'll talk more about the uh, the films and the process coming uh, over the next couple of Mogul Lives. Uh, but also we had a really successful Reboot Camp premiere uh, an NFT auction only last week as well in Hollywood, which was great. Um, actually, I might even just, if we've got time, quickly throw some uh, David Koechner on the red carpet. Uh, thanks very much for all the nice comments already coming in. Um, Borg, thanks very much. Good to see you too. Uh, David Koechner. Actually, we might also just maybe one more. Um, we've got Isabella, part of the Mogul team as well, on the red carpet. Um, got uh, any other assets that we can quickly throw in. Uh, Nicole Aniston on the red carpet as well. Again, this was part of uh, Mogul's NFT uh, auction place they had as well, as well as the Reboot Camp uh, premiere that we had in Hollywood only last week. So a lot of really exciting news coming with Mogul, but with that, let's, uh, let's get Ty into the chat as well so we can talk NFTs, Mogul, as well as any film news and always any questions are welcome. So let's get Ty Thomas, good to see you. Thomas Churchill, great director, had on the show recently as well. Great to see you, Thomas. Hope you're well. Ty, great to have you. How are you? Hey, man, I'm good. You can see me and hear me good? Yeah. I was going to say, anyone in the chat, if any technical issues, uh, just reach out anytime. Just, to, I guess, just a quick sort of where have we got you and uh, where, what's, uh, what's on this week for you? Oh, man. What's on the week for me? Um, well, we just launched our token, uh, and that was a whirlwind on its own. I'm sure you guys know all about that process. Um, and, you know, to add complexity to that, we uh, did a dual launch um, on Binance Smart Chain and Ethereum. So, of course, that added more complexity as well. Uh, so kind of like, you know, for the next week, um, you know, looking forward for us, we're just trying to, um, you know, build out our token ecosystem, uh, add, you know, uh, added utility for the token and kind of functionality wise. But we also just um, actually just pushed a new uh, update to our production server for our main product, niftyconnect.com. Um, and I don't know if the Nifty Labs Instagram is here, if they uh, want to post in, in the chat uh, that website. I think I, I think I saw them in the chat. Yeah, I think I saw them come in. Yeah, so we, we, we're, uh, we just pushed something um, for the new production server uh, today actually. Uh, so we added like dark mode, a few more um, features, um, you know, to the, the login process as well. And just kind of cleaning up a lot of the UI UX um, and just in sorting that out. And then so for the next week, uh, you know, we do continue sprint development for our product. And uh, we're also looking at releasing staking uh, this week as well. Uh, so that's coming soon. And everybody keeps bugging us about that. So that's a big one. So that's that's probably what's uh, immediate. And then maybe we can get into some of the some of the new things that we're working on as well uh, later in the conversation so you're you're a very busy man at the moment definitely definitely uh, very busy um but i enjoy it to be quite honest like i i, I love doing this stuff um you know it, it might be a lot of pressure in in a lot of these different situations but uh, i think we're all just happy to be here and happy to be able to contribute so yeah absolutely absolutely and and for i mean i gave you a very quick sort of uh introduction for anyone that's sort of jumped in quickly uh, hey, Andrew, good to see you in the chat. Uh, Stars is on both too. Um, guys, ask any questions you like with uh, Ty Blackout for those new people that have just jumped in. Uh, I just thought, sort of circle back, Ty, just a little bit, um, your role within Nifty Labs and just maybe a quick pitch of, of what Nifty Labs is all about for anyone that's just joined us. Absolutely, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I go by like Titan Inc. on Twitter, uh, Ty Blackard, you know, either either way. Um, and I'm COO at Nifty Labs. So essentially what that means is I do everything. Um, a lot of the maintaining of like operations and just making sure everybody has what they need. Um, that's where, I, you know, my role um, extends. And then, you know, um, Nifty Labs, the, the tagline of the short description is that we're allowing NFTs to 
uh, be utilized uh, for so much more than, um, you know, secondary market trading and, and things like that. Uh, we're essentially uh, allowing NFTs to be used for uh, access to private content, private communities. Um, you know, you can think of any way that you'd want to be able to use your NFT as some sort of uh, membership or access pass um, is, is what our tech will facilitate. And uh, we have already built our flagship product, niftyconnect.com. Uh, we have a web application already live for that. Like I said earlier, um, we just pushed a new update to that. We have a mobile app that's in iOS and Android beta. So that's also um, on the way. A uh, really cool feature that we're adding uh, is the ability to use NFTs uh, for essentially um, tickets, you know, to in real life events. So you could say, hey, I have mo the Nifty Connect mobile app. And uh, in order to get into this um, in real life event, for example, the Board Ape Yacht Club event, um, you would need like the Board Apes uh, NFTs to gain access to that in real life event. And that can all be done through the mobile app. You know, your event organizer would scan a QR code um, from the attendee. The attendee would have the QR code that says, hey, I have this asset or I don't. Um, so a lot of what we do is all based on like access. And it's either you own the asset or you don't. And that can be NFTs, but it can also be digital assets. So. Yeah. And I mean, I was going to say there's already some questions jumping in as well. Um, you know, my next question, because I think, you know, what the way you guys are thinking, and obviously what Mogul are doing as well, we kind of have the same language going. Yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about, Andrew, I'm going to jump to your question too. That's a great question. Just ask after, after uh, the, the partnership with Mogul. Um, right. What was sort of the, I mean, for anyone that's listening, maybe sum up the partnership with Mogul, what we're sort of doing hand in hand, and also your first reaction to kind of learning about Mogul and, and what we're doing in the film space. Yeah, um, you know, I'll touch on like the first reaction uh, because um, I remember I remember getting uh, in contact with you guys uh, a few months ago, maybe four or five months ago sometime. Uh, and you guys were already on the same page as us in terms of like how NFTs should be utilized. Um, essentially going the route of uh, creating access passes, which you guys did create on your NFTs. Um, and then also having different tiers uh, for those access passes, you know, maybe having something that's more VIP, uh, maybe having something that's more general admission. <clears throat> and then with that, you can essentially use NFTs um, for either digital or physical experiences. In the case of uh, what we've developed already, uh, we have uh, digital experiences mostly nailed down, like so being able to access like private communities on Discord or Telegram, for example, um, or obviously then in the case of like the in real life events. Uh, for physical experiences. Um, so the, the way that Mogul and I, or Mogul and Nifty are going to partner uh, is essentially uh, to start out, we're gonna be doing a really cool um, campaign uh, where essentially if you own a, a mobile access pass um, or whichever NFT you guys wanna decide on using, um, then you'd be able to get access a, a gate. Uh, that gate might go to a, a private Telegram uh, or it might go to a private uh, Discord channel within the mobile um, Discord server. And then uh, another thing that we've kind of, um, is, is part of our ethos in, in Nifty Labs is uh, what we call the access to earn uh, ecosystem. Um, and that's very similar to uh, another concept you've probably heard of, which is play to earn, and that's by Axie Infinity. And the idea is that we're putting more power back in the hands of the user um, who in the Web2 world is, kind of is the product. Uh, you know, if you've ever used a lot of these different free um, applications, typically the way it works is uh, the user's data is the product and that data gets sold off to uh, institutions who are looking for, you know, whatever they want to use that data for. Right. Um, and so in Web 2, you are the product in Web 3. You can actually get paid for um, your different uh, behaviors. Uh, so what that means is like if you access a private community, for example, you should be rewarded for having to join that community um, just for in being incentivized um, to, you know, help or organically grow that community, right? So once the users are inside of a private Discord channel, for example, or a Telegram, we would essentially then reward the user with Nifty. I think you guys are also going to match us um, with either like $500 to $1,000 in stars. Um, and of course, we'll do the same thing, $500 to $1,000 in Nifty. So that's kind of how we wanted to start our partnership. But obviously, um, you guys have done, you know, like the red carpet event recently. Um, it would have been really cool, obviously, if we had our tech ready for, um, you know, your VIP access passes to use the mobile app and gain entry to that event. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that we can go about our partnership. But to start out, we have a really cool, cool campaign that everybody's going to love. So. 
Yeah, no, and, and for anyone that's kind of just jumping in, we're talking obviously a great partnership, Nifty Labs and, and Mogul uh, going forward. Andrew's put forward a really great question, which you, you touched on a little bit with some of the, I suppose, the, the, the aspects of advantages that you guys are already kind of outlining. But uh, Andrew's put in that, how do you think NFT Labs and, uh, sorry, Nifty Labs and Mogul can further use uh, and be together in the film industry? What can we do to yeah. kind of... <laughs> I actually, um, we, we had that panel uh, quite a lot uh, of, well, I don't know, maybe four months ago. I can't remember exactly when we did it last, but uh, we briefly touched on um, the short film industry, which I think is going to really benefit from NFTs greatly because, you know, as it stands right now, um, you know, to, to have like a budget for a short film project, it's, it's usually like very, um, you know, Kickstarter-esque, right? Uh, you know, you got to like find some people to help fund it, you know, find some people that obviously will take a, maybe a pay cut f to help you uh, pr produce the film and so <laughs> forth. Right. And I'm yeah. sure obviously, you know, it's you know how all that goes. Right. Uh, and that's not exactly fun. And it's not a good way for people to, to kickstart your project either. Uh, so what, what we've seen with NFTs, which is really cool, is essentially um, let's just say that maybe you have like a teaser film or like a teaser that that's just going to be uh something to promote for the short film itself. Uh, what you could do is maybe, uh, you know, piece uh, together that short film, or at least take pieces of that short film, cut it up into maybe 100, 200 pieces, right? Um, and then you can have um, maybe like the first couple seconds in one NFT, and then of course, and so on until you get to the rest of the teaser, right? Um, and what you can do with this is you could sell off those, those pieces, those NFT pieces, um, and essentially what that would do is help you kickstart the project. So now everybody who helps fund the project, <clears throat> the short film, has a piece or an ownership uh, and also capturing upside in the development of the short film. And then not only that, they can take those NFTs and they can use them for access, right? So now the short film can say, hey, um, you can use these pieces of this teaser uh, to help fund this short film. And you can use it to join our VIP access group where you can give us you know, ideas mm -hmm on how to best go about, you know, um, uh, building out this short film. Uh, and then beyond that, you can do different events, of course. You could have like the actual short film pr uh, premiere where only the people who helped fund it uh, in the very early days can have access, which of course uh, would be the people who own the NFT. So that's the way I could see immediate uh, partnerships um, and what you guys and, and what the, you know, the film industry would offer with NFTs. Um, and so I think that's, that's where we could work with first. Yeah, and I think that's a really good answer because I think what you're also mentioning there is it's an exciting space to be in for the filmmaker because it's yes. there's something there now that wasn't there before. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that, I mean, you touched on the points there. I, I think a great uh, case study with everything you're saying there is there's a, a feature film, not a short film, but a feature film called uh, Ladawana, um, a filmmaker called mm -hmm. Trevor Hawkins. He made it last year during COVID. He wanted to originally do the festival route. It's an independent film. COVID hits, no festivals, and suddenly he starts looking into NFTs and he sliced up his film into part ownership. So you share in all the, the ideas of profit share, decision making, yep. uh, and then he had lower tier as well where you could get, like you were saying before, you can get access to scenes before anyone else or you can get you know a limited edition cover art of the film, uh, which was just hugely successful. Yeah. And that low indie making, or that low budget filmmaking style of doing things you know, some people, they spend four years making an indie film, it comes out, it doesn't go anywhere, and they've got no other option except to start over on a new film. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's really opening up some exciting spaces, which Mogul wants to support as well. Yeah, no, I, I really do think it's very exciting. Um, my CEO, Lawrence, is a Lawrence. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but before he got into like crypto, he was in the filmmaking industry as well. Um, and so he knows this all too well. You know, when you're, when you're doing short films, um, you know, typically... The, there's a lot of people that want to do these indie films, right? And, uh, you know, budgeting is, is obviously, uh, you know, a difficulty in its own, but also like kickstarting the, the project to even, uh, you know, begin um, is, is a very difficult mission as well. So, you know, allowing the, the people who do support you and, and obviously with our uh, globally traded NFT markets 24 seven, um, you know, if somebody in India can take part in the upside of your short film that you're creating in, in America. Right. Um, there's just a lot of opportunities now. And then beyond that, um, it's very easy to take those those NFTs that are help fundraising that short film um, and use those for different VIP access um, that rewards the uh, the holder uh, for participating so early. 
Um, and then if you want to do like um, something that we did uh, at Nifty Labs, we actually did like tiered NFT sales. So maybe the first ones are the most valuable, the VIPs, <clears throat> and then maybe down the road, you do more general access, right? Um, just depending on like what your limitations are on like maybe uh, event attendees in the future or things like that, right? So you can really customize it how you want. Uh, but in short terms, you know, selling your own NFTs or selling the uh, pieces of a short film teaser um, NFTs is really a cool way to kickstart your project. And it's a really cool way for other people who are interested in what you're building to capture upside, which is honestly one of the coolest things. Exactly right. And I, I think, you know, everything you're saying is, is that sort of space, which is it's progressing in the film industry, which for anyone that's, you know, regardless of what level they're in, there's, there's an opportunity there to really utilize uh, NFTs. Even in, you know, the tentpole films, you know, when you have collectibles uh, yeah. and you can kind of go down that route, uh, it's another revenue stream, but it's also another way to get your product out there to yep. a different fan base. Um, Night in the Crypto has put in uh, two really good points. I'll read the bottom one first. Uh, using NFTs to kickstart the 25K needed to put together even treatment for an indie film is a great use. Yeah, absolutely, Nightly Crypto. Uh, another question you've just put in, um, what about stake uh, Nifty NFTs to earn stars and stake access passes to earn Nifty as part of the partnership to help both projects get more holders? Seems both companies have such a similar mission. And he's talking about Mogul and uh, Nifty. Yeah, that's, that's actually a good question uh, because, so I've been talking about something um, for a, a few months now. It's a concept that we're working on uh, developing, but it's essentially, where um, it's, it's basically NFT staking. It's where you can uh, reward the users for holding on to an NFT, which is obviously very important for um, secondary market sales for NFT floors. Uh, when you think about you know uh, what you're trying to do uh, as an NFT creator is basically like make these users hold on to these NFTs um, for long periods of time to obviously prevent the floor from uh, dipping below whatever the initial sale price is, right? So it's very important that these users have a reason to hold on to these NFTs, just like, you know, you would have um, the same concept for fungible tokens as well. Um, but obviously, because of NFTs, the way they're designed, they're, they're more illiquid. Uh, it's more of a feature than a bug. Um, but essentially, if we, if we can uh, provide um, reasons for these NFT holders to uh, keep these NFTs in their wallets for long periods of times, um, then that's obviously going to be better for the market. So one of the things we want to do is offer uh, staking uh, via fungible or even non-fungible tokens um, that are, are rewarded to the user for holding on to these NFTs. So essentially, I would just take my NFT, let's just say a mobile access pass. Uh, I could take it to one of the Nifty Connect gates, um, and that gate would be like a promo gate or a giveaway gate uh, of such. And uh, just for holding on to that NFT or having that NFT for a length of time, uh, you could accrue um, essentially your rewards. So you would maybe come back to the platform every few days or a week or whatever, and you would collect more and more rewards, um, which is, again, part of the access to earn ecosystem, um, where you would just consistently get more and more rewards uh, just for holding on to an NFT. So we're already thinking about stuff like that. Um, it's, it's pretty important. We've had many uh, companies come to us and ask for that. Um, and honestly, for us, uh, we've already built something very similar uh, on a pilot. So now it's just time to look at implementation. Yeah, I mean, I, I love what you guys are doing, just first of all, with the work ethic, but also just kind of like thinking ahead the whole time, uh, not waiting for someone else to do it. Uh, yeah, now, Crypto's you. jumped in. Uh, another quick question. Uh, in the access to earn ecosystem, where are the rewards being generated from? Great question. I mean, these are all good questions. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, so we actually have a dedicated ecosystem rewards uh, uh, fund uh, as part of our, our token economics. So we built in the ability to um, distribute those rewards over a period of time. Uh, and so those rewards will come out, uh, I think every few months, I don't, I don't remember the exact vesting schedule for it, but that's essentially what we're gonna be using for these rewards um, to get back to the community. Uh, and then beyond that, we have plans to do buybacks of our own token, um, you know, with our own cash that we generate from revenue uh, to avoid, you know, getting into a weird posinomic situation where we're buying back with our own tokens or something weird, you know? Um, and so we, we plan to uh, do buybacks. And then with those buybacks, those tokens eventually go back to the community uh, once again. Um, so the whole point, again, is just trying to reward the community for, um, you know, being incentivized for certain behaviors. So that might be accessing private content, accessing private communities, uh, or even attending events, whatever that looks like.
Yeah, and I think I think one of the interesting things for anyone that's uh, just joined us as well, we're talking with uh, Nifty Labs, uh, Ty Blackard. Uh, one of the things that's interesting is obviously mobile wants to give everyone a voice. So obviously the communities that, that we have there, um, and this is kind of circling back to your previous answer, but giving everyone a voice, but also verifying, you know, we're not just getting bots in there, we're just getting random people voting on projects, basically verifying the, the voices that are there. Um, can you take us a little bit deeper about how Nifty Labs is going to work with mobile to kind of bring that together? Yeah. Yeah, what's what's really important um, in in crypto, uh, you know, specifically, but even beyond that, um, to other community groups, is uh, there's the problem with bots, and there's also the issue with, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, when you do giveaways on Twitter or Instagram, wherever you do it on social media, uh, typically, like like I said, you get bots and you get people who are just only interested in, um, you know, getting the giveaways, right, and then they'll leave right after. Um, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, incentivize organic behavior uh, based on asset ownership. Um, not only that, but we feel like if you do own certain assets, you should be rewarded anyways, uh, you know, with some kind of exclusive offerings, whether that's like rewards in the, in the, in the way of like fungible token loyalty rewards or in the way of, you know, some kind of exclusive membership, whatever that looks like, uh, the user should be rewarded for, you know, having to, uh, be incentivized to join certain groups and things like that. Now, on the, on the flip side, um, you know, the the creators or the uh, the community organizers would love to have organic growth. You know, I don't think anybody here would say we love bots and we want more of them, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't think anyone wants yeah. that. No, and, and even the community members don't want that, right? That's that's it's just not the way it should work. Uh, we should be able to to capture organic uh, traffic. Um, by rewarding these users, and it shouldn't cost the, the creators or the community moderators an arm and a leg to do it either. Um, right. It should just be a very simple um, automated system to uh, incentivize that growth. So, for example, um, you know, in the case of maybe mobile wanting to, uh, you know, add people to a Telegram group that you guys have, um, you could essentially say, hey, if you go through this gate, you get rewarded for simply going through, and then. If you hold on to an asset uh, for a lengthy period of time, guess what? You also get rewarded. So we're just trying to uh, encourage organic growth. You can only get organic growth if you prove that you own digital, digital assets, right? Because uh, a bot can't go and buy uh, an NFT, a, a digital um, you know, NFT access right. from you guys. It's not possible, right? At least I haven't seen it uh, yet. Maybe in the future bots evolve, but currently they're not that uh, evolved. Um, and so... That's one of the ways that we can essentially vet um, these users is based on their digital asset ownership. So if you hold an NFT, I know that you are vested in our ecosystem and you actually are not a bot, you're real, I can talk to you and get valuable feedback from you. And I don't have to worry about, you know, if you're just, you know, pulling my leg uh, and you're a bot just responding to me, you know what I mean? Um, so that's kind of how we, we see things working. Uh, we're just trying to encourage organic growth um, and that's all based on digital asset ownership because you really can't fake that. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think I think everything you're saying there as well sluts into obviously the mindset that mobile's got because obviously we want transparency as well. That's the whole yeah. point of obviously building a community. Um, Borg, I'm going to just, if I haven't pronounced that right, uh, let me know as well. Your question, great question. Uh, you gave a brilliant idea about your short-term objectives. Can you tell us about uh, where you see the project in five years, please? Well, uh, glad you chose five years uh, as the time frame because uh, <laughs> our, our team tokens are locked for, um, well, invested for five years, locked for a year. So uh, in five years, um, our, our team would have acquired all their tokens. Um, but really, I mean, the five-year roadmap for us is, is uh, becoming the premier uh, middleware authentication for digital assets. Um, and that, that sounds very fancy and, and maybe very high tech, but it's very simple. Uh, we look at ourselves as kind of like... Um, the, the means in which Web3 brands can uh, market and communicate and uh, create organic traffic from Web2, or sorry, uh, Web2 brands uh, trying to reach Web3 communities. Uh, so let me give an example of that. So like, let's just say uh, Arizona Ice Tea, uh, they recently just did, um, and by the way, this is, not, this is not vetted by the community, Board Ape Yacht Club did not approve this, but Arizona Ice Tea did a, a marketing um, event with a board ape, I guess they purchased, um, and they put it on one of their cans. Um, and so uh, this was a really cool marketing event for Arizona Ice Tea, although, like I said, it wasn't approved by Board Ape Yacht Club, but it didn't have to be. 
because uh, the board ate the Yacht Club said, hey, if you own these NFTs, uh, the IP is yours. Uh, internet property is yours, right? So uh, Arizona Ice-T legally could do what they did um, by doing this different, this cool marketing event. Um, but you're going to see a lot more of this. You're going to see, uh, you know, a lot bigger brands try to essentially communicate with these, um, these Web3 br uh, brands as well. So Web2 brands, you have like Pizza Hut Canada, uh, uh, you know, obviously uh, Arizona Ice-T, uh, Visa even, you know, Visa brought a crypto pump for like $150,000. Um, and so all these Web2 brands are trying to get more in the mix with Web3 communities. Um, and you do have like Web3 communities that are kind of premier brands as well, like the Board Ape Yacht Club, CryptoPunks, and then you have everything in between there, right? Um, you, you don't necessarily want to be able to uh, promote all Web3 communities because not all of them are, are going to stick around. Um, so the idea is essentially being able to allow uh, these Web2 brands to be able to communicate with Web3 uh, communities uh, because that's what they want to be able to do. And what that means is, um, okay, let's just say, for example, uh, Visa wants to partner with the Board Ape Yacht Club and be able to... Um, you know, have some sort of rewards uh, for owning a board, a yacht club, uh, NFT. Uh, and they can do that, um, you know, through us, essentially. So the next five years for me, um, it, it's pretty much uh, trying to bridge the gap for these Web2 brands, these Web3 communities, and then vice versa. Web3 communities also want to be able to reach out to these Web2 brands. Yeah. And I mean, that's, that's exciting stuff. Nightly Crypto has just mentioned, I uh, uh, didn't realize I knew that and uh, didn't buzz, dud bus. Did Budweiser do that too? Yes. Um, uh, what did they do? They did. Uh, I can't remember what they did specifically, but they did something on Twitter. Um, it was it was basically an NFT marketing event. I can't remember what it was specifically, but but very similar. I mean, Visa's doing it. Budweiser, like I said, Charmin even did their own stuff. Taco Bell, uh, Pizza Hut Canada. Um, these guys are all trying to get into NFTs. But the big thing is, not all of them really want to have their own NFT projects. Right. Because you run into the risk of, of making money on royalties or secondary market sales, or even just having these NFTs traded on the secondary markets. That's a very big concern. Um, and then you also run into the issue of, uh, well, if you create a community, you have to upkeep that community. And then what do you do with your existing loyalty reward systems? Um, like Subway, for example, if they wanted to do an NFT project, they would you know, have to somehow integrate that into their existing loyalty reward system uh, where they give loyalty points for people purchasing Subway, um, you know, the, the Subway, the franchise, the restaurant. So we're trying to figure out ways to essentially integrate into already existing loyalty reward systems um, that these Web2 brands have, uh, but also connect them with Web3 communities. Um, and that's that's where we come in. We're kind of like the middleware in between that connection there. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's a, a great question to come in. And Nightly Crypto, you've got a – I'll quickly go to yours, actually, Nightly Crypto. Um, so is that a thesis of Nifty to basically partner with these big brands and allow them to use your tools? That's the goal. That is the goal. Um, and I'm not just speaking, um, you know, on hypotheticals. Uh, I can't release any names per se, but um, the, the biggest names around crypto and outside of crypto um, in the payments industry uh, have talked to us uh, multiple times. Um, and we, you know, we, we've had serious conversations about working together because, um, you know, the kind of the writings on the wall uh, about the way that these NFTs are going to be utilized. And, um, you know, these big payments providers, for example, they they're sitting on the sidelines. You know, how do they how do they participate? How do they get involved with these Web3 communities um, without just like simply purchasing one of these uh, one of these Web3 communities NFTs? Right. That's that's just not going to do. It. It's not going to cut it. They're missing out on billions of dollars in volume. Um, you know, just by sitting on the sidelines. So they want to figure out how can we connect the Web2 brands that we're already working with, again, with these uh, Web3 communities. Yeah. Uh, welcome, everyone, who's just jumped in the chat as well. Let's take it slightly to, to One Direction. Um, I'd love to ask your question as an overall thing. Um, is there an industry you can see right now that hasn't utilized NFTs? We know the music industry took off quite fast. I think yep. the film industries they're kind of really building ground at the moment. But is there an industry you're seeing that is yet to utilize NFTs? Yes. Um, and it's surprising. And maybe, maybe it won't be surprising for people. But um, one industry that is really cornered is the loyalty rewards industry. Um, that market is very, uh, 
controlled, you could say. It's there's only a couple of different competitors that pretty much run all of the Web two brands uh, loyalty reward systems, um, and so there there's just not a um, a huge rush to try to uproot uh, what they've already built um, in these loyalty rewards infrastructure systems, right? Um, like for some, like I just mentioned, Subway for Subway to uh, you know want to uh, you know, uproot their entire, entire loyalty reward system and go for something more NFT based would just not work. It's just not going to happen. Right. So, uh, that would require us to, you know, work more closely with them to fit into what they already have. Um, and then just kind of build around it, you know? So I would say loyalty rewards is definitely something that's very mm -hmm. untapped and it's kind of surprising based on, um, how easy it, it is for us to do that in web three. Like if you think about it right now, you guys, if you want to reward your users, how could you do that? Well, you have all the wallet addresses of all the NFT holders you have. If you want to reward them with stars tokens at any point, you can do that, right? Right. That's right. That, you, you have that ability because we have the the ability to directly tap into uh, Web three marketing or these wallets um, that you can't really do, you know, with a Web two brand and, and Web two loyalty reward system. So we're just trying to figure out how to, um, you know, integrate the two together very seamlessly. And, and I mean, I think one of the, the things that follow on question for that as well is um, for our film audiences, which is out there, we've kind of gone over the, uh, the benefits a little bit about, you know, how NFTs can help you, especially the indie filmmaker. How do you see the film industry and NFTs in five years time? That's a great question. I think, I think it's interesting um, because NFTs themselves, they don't have to be um, short films or like very short clips. Technically, if you have a big enough database, um, you could have each NFT represent a movie itself. Okay, so if you think about like pirating, you know, that's something that obviously comes to mind very, very quickly. If you made all the movies NFTs, um, that are just, you know, the, the, the actual data themselves is hosted in some database, which is already hosted somewhere. Like Netflix obviously has all the movies that they're streaming somewhere. So you'd have uh, the metadata uh, point to a database that just has the entire movie. Um, and then, boom, you just got rid of pirating. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah, I you only have the, the NFT that is, uh, it's obviously non-fungible. So you have to own that to be able to watch the movie, for example. And I think, I think that's a great point because one of the big things I saw, and, and again, I'll, I'll lend back to that uh, particular podcast I was watching with uh, Trevor Hawkins, the filmmaker who did the NFT for his film. But mm -hmm. since COVID did come in, it, it really changed the way people are watching films, especially yep. from you know, the big screen now onto to streaming platforms. The whole issue of, of copyright and obviously pirating is, is just, again, it goes up the more people are streaming things. So that's mm -hmm. where something like an NFT ownership and actually having that on the blockchain is a whole heap more cleaner than the existing way at the moment. Exactly. No, I totally agree. I, I think, um, you know, additionally, if you want to think of other ideas, I think that there's going to be, um, you know, even more uh, short film producers, uh, you know, figuring out, hey, I can use NFTs to jumpstart my operations here. And then beyond that, uh, I, I think that's going to be the de facto standard, um, you know, where, where that is how you raise funds for your project. Um, and then that's how also these community members can capture upside. I think that's going to be just the way things work. Um, you know, obviously, you guys are leading the fronts on the marketplace efforts for that. So um, I I'm very confident that that's what the, the short film industry and also movies in general will look like in like five years. Yeah. You know what I think the big carrot is as well is I, I, I think obviously for anyone that's making a film, it is a, it's a business. People want to make money. The mm -hmm. moment you can say to them, hey, you know, if you actually bring in NFTs, there's another revenue stream. That, yeah. that in itself makes it from a business perspective, forget about the creative side, but from a business perspective, it's a much more appealing proposition as well. So I think that's the other side of it too, where people, if they're, they're looking to kind of, you know, make money in the film industry, there's a real opportunity to kind of get in now. And that's what Mogul obviously wants to share that kind of information to people too. Yeah. And then, you know, if you think about all the movies that um, there's some sort of like physical collectibles that come with them, right? Or, or you're, there's some kind of package you can get. You can obviously do it for like games where you can uh, buy a full package and you've got like physical collectibles that come with it. I mean, it's the same concept, except now we can add, you know, NFTs to the mix. We can give you a digital collectible on top of any physical collectibles. And then beyond that, really like the way we're looking at things um, 
you know, for, for the physical collectible side is imagine you can just take your digital collectible that you receive and you can go redeem it on a, you know, some Shopify store or, you know, maybe some proprietary store for the brand, whatever that looks like. Um, where essentially, hey, I, I can prove I own this NFT. And so now this NFT also gives me the ability to uh, redeem a physical collectible that can be sent to my address. Um, and so they go, yeah. Yeah, yeah a, another, another offshoot, again, that, that wasn't there before. I'll quickly run through just a couple of uh, points. We've got uh, Borg. And again, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that, uh, that right. Uh, he writes, uh, have an idea, if you don't mind. Uh, have you thought to create a space where other giants such as Netflix, Amazon, Warner Brothers, or even Disney can create their own tokens using stars to trade? Um, sooner or later, they're joining the space and you guys can be the gate to the blockchain. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, I, I think all these, these brands, and we, I was just talking to um, a blockchain agency earlier that... Um, creates uh, branded marketplaces, white label solutions um, for these these brands, right? What's going to happen is, uh, you know, Netflix, Disney, Fox Entertainment, these guys aren't necessarily gonna wanna uh, use OpenSea, uh, you know, for their NFT sales, at least not their primary NFT sales. Um, they're gonna want their own branded marketplaces in, in most cases, um, that's just how these guys operate. Right. It's, it's um, like the streamers, you know, they want their yeah. own streaming service. They don't want Netflix if it's, you know, HBO. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. They, they want their own ecosystems. And so that's exactly what they'll do. Um, they will create their own like uh, marketplaces and such to to promote these primary offerings. But they don't necessarily care what, what happens afterwards, um, as long as, of course, they figure out kind of like the revenue strategy behind the NFTs and kind of like um, how to upkeep the ecosystems in general. Because like I mentioned earlier, once you start this, you can't just forget about it. Uh, you know, you have to upkeep your NFT ecosystems. Um, you have to add added functionality. It's like the load to reward systems. Like imagine if Subway rolls it out, you know, last week and they decide this week, hey, we're not doing that anymore. Uh, not a good look. It's not going to yeah. work. <laughs> um, so you, you have to like just dedicate a whole lot of time and effort to building a strategy around an NFT ecosystem. Um, and then for those big brands, they're just going to want their own marketplaces, their own branded marketplaces. Um, but yeah, beyond that, um, you know, if, if these guys can essentially have some sort of, uh, you know, backend functions that are operating um, that is not necessarily um, front facing, uh, that would give access to these different, um, you know, NFT holders, uh, then they'll take that, right? They, they can do stuff like that. They're okay with that. Um, and that's kind of where we would come in, right? We're, we're kind of like the backend functions for um, a lot of these uh, different utilities uh, for these NFTs, uh, for these brands. Um, so that's kind of how we would see ourselves working with them. Um, and in some cases, obviously, we would do some front facing uh, co-marketing and branding and, and things like that if we can if we can achieve that. Yeah. I mean, again, I, I love everything you guys are saying. Obviously, um, you guys have your, your hand in a few different pies as far as, uh, you know, what you're looking to bring out. Mm -hmm. But I, I love what you guys are doing. Um, Nightly Crypto, uh, just finishing your point, Netflix can buy moguls uh, and use them as characters since they own the IP rights. Uh, just circling back to what we were talking about before. Uh, great point. Great point. And Netflix would definitely have the money as well to uh, to do that. Uh, Ty, we're almost out of time. I, okay. I wanted to kind of give this space to you as well. Is there anything that, that you'd like to kind of share to our audience again? Because we'll, we'll have this interview up anyway uh, right. about what you're doing we haven't covered or even just, again, for further thoughts with uh, working with Mogul. Yeah, um, you know, I, I think from a high level, um, you know, we're, first of all, we're happy to work with you guys. We've been partner for some time. Uh, like I said, I love what you guys are doing. Um, you got the right mindset and all this stuff, just like we do. And I think it's just very important for us to just stick together and, and you know, build out this space together because um, this is where everything's going. This is how NFTs are going to be used. Um, you know, we're, we're at the very early floor uh, for NFT development and infrastructure. If you look around at a lot of these other chains, uh, you know, not named Ethereum, um, you know, there, there's just a lot of uh, lack of infrastructure built. And that just tells you how early we are. Um, so uh, first of all, congrats to anybody who's actually paying attention to NFTs right now. Uh, we're building an NFTs. Um, and then beyond that, uh, you know, us personally at Nifty, we're just a very transparent, genuine team. We just like to build really cool stuff. Uh, and if we get to work with cool partners like Mogul, then we're absolutely happy to do that. So uh, thanks for having me on. And, um, you know, as kind of like a, a last minute, thing to leave with you guys uh you know obviously we do have our token trading right now um you know it, it's 
it's been a lot to to get us to this point. We we built for over a year before ever releasing a token, so this is you know a very serious business to us. Um, and yeah, and and you know we're always just building new new cool um, technology. Uh, like I said earlier, we have a new update to our our platform niftyconnect.com. Um, but if you just want to go like follow us on any of our platforms, um, you know, like Twitter and Instagram, it's NFTYLAB. Um, and you can just keep up with us in our Telegram or Discord and we'll be happy to chat with you and, um, you know, tell you what we're doing. Yeah. I mean, I can't wait to get you back on anyway to hear the, the updates because the speed in which you guys are doing things as well is We move quick. <laughs> yeah, we, we do know one thing about crypto is that uh, we all, the only advantage we have is how fast we move. So right. we... We, we try to move as fast as we can. Yeah. Well, I mean, congrats on everything you guys have done. Like I said, we'd love to get you back in to hear about the updates. And again, thanks very much, everyone, who's, uh, who's come in for the great questions as well. This has really been uh, a great op to opportunity as well. I love what you said, just going back to as when naming some of the, the, the ways for our film audience, how you can get involved in, mm -hmm. in NFTs. You don't have to have a feature film to really start looking at a revenue. I mean, you can start making yeah. revenue off a short film. Yes. Um, yeah, uh, Nifty Lab. Thank you, Mogul Official. We really appreciate. It. Look, we love working with you guys. Um, like and like, and and like I said, you know, really exciting stuff coming up between Nifty Labs and uh, and Mogul as well. So we've got lots of updates coming up too. Thank you so much, James. I appreciate, it, man. Yeah, Ty. Great chat. Take care and see you guys soon on Mogul Live. See you guys. Thank you.